Well, this is definitely a video I didn't want to have to make, but every one of these cars has a story, and some of them are happy, and some are very, very sad. So in the last couple videos, you guys saw a walk around to the big collector car auction, and the Survivor Oldsmobile Tornado, original paint, original interior. This was a running, driving car. And when they sold it on sale day, it ran, it drove. But this is one of those collector cars that, having been in storage for a bit, the owner not being in the best of health for a while, it had been a little while since it was driven, and it did need brake work. The car was purchased at auction. A friend of mine, who's a classic car dealer, bought it. He had it listed for sale, and it had a buyer. Then, disaster struck. The night the car was being loaded on the trailer to deliver the next morning, drove around the block in a hilly residential area, hit the brakes, and there was nothing. Single jar master cylinder had blown out. With a split second, literally, of reaction time, there was no easy choice. Either send the car over a hill with a hundred foot drop to the bottom, or steer it toward the trees to slow it and stop it the hard way. Unfortunately, this once beautiful car is now relegated to demolished parts car. There's extensive damage. However, there are still a lot of good parts from this car that could go to help others. I want to tell this story not with the intention of sensationalizing it, but more as a PSA to say, if you have a collector car with an old single jar master cylinder identified by the one line coming out of it, upgrade as soon as you can to this dual chambered design. The purpose of the dual chamber is to split the braking system. The diagonal front and rear wheels have two separate braking circuits so that that way, even if there is a failure, there will still be one front wheel and one rear wheel opposite of each other that will still maintain some braking and get you slowed down safely. Unfortunately, the Toronado tragedy is not the first time this has happened and won't be the last. Some of you have seen recent video footage elsewhere of a 1964 Comet that had had several hundred thousand dollars of rebuilds and upgrades over a 20 year period. Unfortunately, one of those early upgrades was the braking system and on a test drive, that car was involved in a traffic collision. Unnecessary, but we get complacent, and with these old cars, we think just because it stopped the last time, that's a guarantee that it will still stop the next time. Fortunately, there are many available dual chambered master cylinders with many cases power brake boosters, which is a great time when you're in there to go ahead and upgrade to power brakes and get your car stopping like a modern one. Many of these are even engineered to your specific chassis of vehicle. While you're in there, if there's any question to the age of your calipers, wheel cylinders, and brake hoses, anything in the system with rubber in it, get those all off of there and get new ones in their place. Flush your hard lines, inspect your hard lines, especially at the clamps, Often, this is where road grime collects, and there's a chance that your hard lines can develop pinholes. 
and also leak your fluid out, causing the brakes to fail. If there's any question about the hard lines, go ahead and replace them too. Again, many vehicles have kits of all the lines available. Rubber brake hoses seldom leak or burst, but they very commonly collapse on the inside, which causes the brakes to not want to release. So, even if they look good from the outside, be sure and get them off. Anytime I replace one bad part on a brake system, I like to just put everything on. There's no better insurance than a well-maintained vehicle with new parts. Thanks for stopping by to listen to the story of the Tornado tragedy. Unfortunately, not every story has a happy ending. On every one of these cars, regardless of what it is, we always roll the dice, and sometimes, well, the number just comes up zero.